Hi and welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and we are continuing our video series on 2023's external exams in Queensland for general mathematics. And this is question three from paper two, a complex question on networks. So before we get started, I just wanted to share with you some ways that you could engage further with us here at McClatchy Maths. Firstly, consider liking and subscribing and hitting that notifications bell so you'll always know when the next video is available. Why don't tell someone what you thought of the video? You could share it with us in the comments or you could share it on your um, social media page, share it with a friend by email or even consider putting it on your class OneNote if you're a teacher. There's also a new function on YouTube called Super Like. That means you can give back a dollar or two to help us with the running costs of the channel. And finally, you could follow us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Okay, let's get straight into question three. It's worth five marks. And we've been given a diagram of a network. The diagram represents a network of 10 ski stations connected by chairlift cables. So each of these dots represents a, a, a ski station. Each of these lines or the edges represented are the chairlift cables to get them from one to the other. The length in kilometres of each cable is shown. So for example here, that means two kilometres, except for cable C, which is closed for maintenance. When cable C reopens, the minimum total cable length required to connect all the stations will decrease by one kilometre. Now what we're asked to do is work out the length of cable C and the minimum total cable length required to connect all the stations when cable C reopens. So when we see this keyword here about minimum length in a network, we know we're being asked to find out about a minimum spanning tree because it says the minimum length to connect every station. So that means that we don't need all of the cables to get between station to station. We just want the minimum length of cables that are required. So what we're gonna to do to start a minimum spanning tree, um, we need to forget about cable C for the moment and just find the minimum length of this network. Once we find the minimum length of this network, well, then we can deal with this decreasing by one kilometer. So we're going to start by drawing in our smallest edges. Now for minimum spanning trees, there are different um, strategies that you can use. Um, I um, like to use um, something called Kruskal's algorithm, which is what I'm going to demonstrate here today. There's also Prim's algorithm. It doesn't really matter how you do it as long as you get the right place. So what I like to do is find the smallest edge first of all, which is this 0.8 up here. So I'm going to keep those smallest ones in there because those smallest ones will allow me to achieve a minimum cable length. So the next biggest one is this number one over here. So let's draw that one in. And we're going to keep doing this until we've got no um, more loops in the network. This is what we consider to be a loop and until we've reached every vertex by this spanning tree. So the next biggest one will be 1.2 over here and then 1.3 over here. And then we've got 1.4 down here. So we're slowly drawing these in. The next biggest one will be, if I look through here, 1.8. And then the next biggest number is the number two. But if I draw that in, I'm gonna create this loop, which is redundant. So I'm not going to include number two up here. My next biggest number after number two is 2.4. And then my next biggest is 2.5. And the next biggest is 3.2, but once again, that's gonna create a loop, so no, no, no there. And then I've got a choice now of 3.6 and 4.2 and three. Three is the smallest here. Once again, creates a loop, so no, no. 3.6 is the last one. And let me just check, have I got every vertex represented? Yes, I do. I've got my minimum spanning tree and cable C is not included. So therefore, I've got my first out of five marks. Woohoo, we're a bit of the way there. Okay, so the first thing I need to do now is now that I've got this minimum spanning tree, I need to work out how long it is. What is that um, length of the cables in that network? So let's add all of these numbers up and we've got them there and that will add up to 16 kilometers exactly. So that was my next step and my next um, mark was awarded for doing that. Now the thing is, is that when cable C reopens, at the moment the minimum length is 16, when cable C reopens, I'm going to be able to redraw this tree and the new length will be 15 kilometres. So 16 take away one kilometre makes 15 kilometres. Actually writing that down, even though it's not very hard and you probably could do that in your head, actually writing that down, that new length with C got you another mark. So try not to do anything in your head. Try to record everything you're doing on paper and your reasons why you're doing that. Okay, so I know that once I add C back in, um, I'm going to get this new length of 15 kilometres. Now, I don't need 
to redraw a spanning tree because I still can't do that without knowing what this one is. However, what this basically means is that now that C is included, one of these lines is going to disappear and be replaced by C. And whatever line that is, cable C is going to be a kilometre shorter than it because that will reduce the total by a, by a kilometre. So if I look through at all of my long lengths here, um, the one I would be removing would be the biggest one here, um, and that is 3.6 kilometres, and cable C is going to replace this one. And when I remove that from the network and redraw cable C in, the difference is going to be one. So 3.6 take away one kilometre is 2.6 kilometres. And now I have determined the length of cable C, and therefore I have done what I've been asked to do, and I've been achieving my last, um, last mark. And there was an actually a fifth mark there for logical organization communicating key steps. Now you might be wondering, what does that involve? So it's things like this, some of your justification and explanation. If you're thinking in your head about things and you wanna explain that, um, showing your calculations, using your units of measurement, um, drawing your spanning tree on here, um, even stating what algorithm you used, all these little steps that you can do demonstrate the flow of the question, and that provides that logical organisation mark for you. Uh, there are other ways to achieve this solution. I did mention using a different algorithm. QCAA has also done some things in reverse as well. So why not jump on their website and have a look at alternative methods of solving this problem? Well, thank you so much for watching today. If you've got any questions at all, you can reach us on mcclatchymaths at yahoo.com. And don't forget to engage with us further by liking and subscribing, super liking if you're up to it, um, and even following us on social media. Don't forget to jump onto our partner's website, exam-insights.com. This is your one-stop shop for all of the 2023 and previous year's exams and exam solutions. It's a wonderful free resource for students and teachers. Well, thank you again. My name is Natalie McClutchy. Have a wonderful day.